Good morning, guys. Um, today, we're going to try something a little different. I've never tried before. So normally on Wednesday, we talk about something that we can improve in our business. But today, I want to try something different. I want to talk about what is working in your business. So maybe not always focusing on things that we can do better. I mean, there's always a lot of things to do. The biggest room in the house is the room for improvement. But what is something that you're doing that really is working for you? Um, so I guess I will start. Um, I have actually never been this focused before and I'm still not focused. So as far as like, um, th this is the fewest things I have ever done. So I was talking to, to tech, tech and sports yesterday about this. Like for me, this is like laser focused, only doing like 10 things. So I'm, what's working for me is really focusing on my, my niche, which is just clothing. Um, I only have four items that are local local pickup out of 11,000. So I'm not selling random things. Um, and I'm spending probably two or three hours a day just inside my store, cleaning up business policies, adding in item specifics that we're missing, researching what sells well in my, my niche. I've never done that before. Usually I'm researching new niches, new ideas, new platforms, but I've just been focusing on what's been working in my store and that's it. I haven't been looking for new things. So maybe let's, let's start with Scott Eifler. Scott, what have you been doing recently that has been working well for you? Good morning, everybody. Um, kind of the same lines, Chris. I'm really, I've, I've come to the conclusion I can't sell everything. <laughs> that was that was a big step. I need to get rid of some stuff, but um, um, staying focused, and like you, like you just said, just cleaning up my house internally on my eBay site, um, you know, going for the hundreds across the board. I'm 90, I'm a hundred hundred. And I think I'm like 99 on shipping, 99 something on shipping right now. So <clears throat> just trying to keep all those matrix up, um, picking up good items, not just random items. We've all gone down that route and bought the wrong things and they sit. So time to shed some of that stuff off and, and, and just stay focused. I have a thought when it comes to that. So people are, you know how they say you um, step, what is, what is the saying? Like step over a nickel to save a penny. What is that saying? So what I, I, my analogy for that is people are missing out on making millions of dollars to chase a hundred dollars here and there. Like, Oh, I'm going to go sell this and make you know $500. You, you would make literally millions of dollars. If you just stuck to one niche and became really, really, if you were known for that, also people would take you a lot more seriously. If you're an accountant, people don't expect you to do other things. Oh, you're an accountant. Oh, you you also flip fly fishing gear on the weekends. Probably not. You just you're an accountant, and then you go fly fishing for fun on the weekend. But when you're a reseller, people are always like expecting. Oh, what did you find this week? You know, and, and you don't say, "Well, I found the perfect way to never make enough money." Always chase things that are different and new, and never get good at anything. So, you know, I um, I think resellers are kind of like. You know, it's just so easy to chase a hundred dollar profit. So easy. Oh, I'll make a little more money if I do that. Like, um, here's my, the basic analogy for: Should I sell on Poshmark or Mercari or Amazon? If you have five hundred listings, it's better than a hundred listings on five platforms. Trust me, way better. And it's actually easier to have five hundred items on one platform than a hundred on five platforms. All the time you waste optimizing a platform, learning it. And then if you tell people you, you sell on five platforms, they're never going to be like, oh, wow, that's amazing. At least not me. I don't, I, don't, I don't find it impressive that you sell on a bunch of platforms. I only care about your sales. Do you have a lot of sales? Do you have time with your family? Are you in good health? I, you know, do, do you you're think, on five. Go ahead. Well, sorry, Chris. No, do you think that um, I, I'm going to try the hammock? I'm not sure which platform I'm going to have them list, delist, and, and try. I'm not doing it with all my items by any means whatsoever. I'm going to try clothing with them. 
and maybe just jeans or just women's tops, or I'm going to try to focus something with them on one of those platforms. Thoughts? Yeah. Um, that's, I think when you hire someone, you should only do one platform, one task. <clears throat> okay. So this is a, this is a good conversation. When I first started with hammock, they weren't like they are now. They were like, Hey, Chris, let's help you do something. And then they helped me do that. Now, now hammock says, whatever you want to do, we'll do it for you. And th that's, that makes it so they're incredibly unreliable because how do you even promise that? You know, Cellhound to me is very, very reliable, but they can only do one thing. They only can do clothing one way. They can't cross list. They just do one thing. And, you know, they have millions of dollars of venture capital money to do one thing. Right. I'm sure Hammock will raise a lot of money, too, because they're going that route. But honestly, it's really confusing as an investor when you don't know exactly what it is that they're doing. They do everything. And that's confusing to the customer. Because what will happen, Scott, when you use Hammock, because of that, you can do anything. It's difficult to train your VA to get good at it because they're always even my virtual assistants with um, four or five categories is already difficult. You know, that's all I'm with hammock. It's just easier to chase a whole bunch of rabbits because they can list anything. Yeah. I, I don't know about this whole goodwill thing. I've been watching it. I bought a few things, but I'm not, it, it, that's not me. It's a waste of time to sit on the internet all day and look at stuff. I am sorry. Some people do. I, I you're, you're chasing, like you said, Chris, you're chasing hundred dollar bills and there's, you know, or, or, or dimes are dollar bills in the ground and there are hundred dollar bills in the tree, you know, right above you. And, and it's all focused on the one tree is your one item or your one category of items. And all this other poo is all over the place. That's actually a great, your phone pitches hundred dollar ideas to you nonstop all day. But you know, you don't to make a million dollars. All you have to do is just, go a little bit. It's not even that much further, to be honest. It's like a hundred yards in front of you is this hundred dollar stuff. And a mile in front of you is millions of dollars. Now a mile is pretty far versus a hundred feet, but it's not that far. You can still walk to it. You know, and there's no shortcut. You have to walk there. So pretty straightforward. I think that everyone I'm asking online, what is working for people and everyone is saying consistency. So, I mean, I hope everyone just writes that down. And then after this video, you just try to be consist consistent in what you do. Um, so Risky is asking about all these extra eBay fees. And I asked what to clarify. He doesn't, he or she doesn't know what, um, what they're for. This is what I think they're for. I think I've noticed a couple extra fees on my bill. I bet it's from undercharged shipping. So maybe you said something was first class. It's actually... 15 ounces instead of 13 ounces, then that might charge you an extra dollar or so. That's the only thing I can think of. That's the extra eBay fees because everything now is pretty straightforward. They have managed payments where they take the, the fees out before and then they have a promoted listings and store fee. There's not really other fees. It, it's probably because you underpaid for something. Justin is saying most sellers cannot stay focused on one track. Yeah, that's literally, um, let's see. Sorry, someone was asking for the link. Um, it's really, really hard to stay focused on one thing, just in general. It's not just resellers. <clears throat> Let's go with Christine. Christine, good morning. What's working well for you? Well, what is working well for me is being in one category. <clears throat> and um, I haven't, honestly, I haven't seen the sales um, start rolling in yet, um, only because I haven't been consistent. And... Um, I've, uh, I've, I've come to the realization that I really need to identify a lot of my vocabulary, um, like consistency. You just said the word consistency, and it's like, okay, what the heck does consistency mean to me? What does it look like? It looks really bad right now because I've spent so much time um, 
putting the systems together for one item, you know, getting rid of all the, the um, templates for women's skirts, women's dresses, women's pants, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now I just have shirts. Um, <clears throat> doing all that stuff and, you know, setting up my inventory and I haven't been listing as well, so, or as many. So my sales have obviously gone down because I haven't been consistent. So what does consistency mean to me in the past? What does it look like? What, in the, what does it look like right now in the present and what it will look like in the future? And that's always going to consistently change, I would think, because what? if I can identify really what it looks like in the past, then I'll know when I'm slipping back into that bad habit. Or what is your listing habit now? Habit. My listing habit right now? Yeah. A, um, yesterday, I didn't do anything. Yesterday was my birthday. I, I listed five items. Blah. You know, it was my birthday. That, that, that's not that's not nothing. That's still something. You're right. You're right. That That's yeah. OK, it, it was five. Um, the day before it was zero. Um, I've got 30 listings ready to go because I'm going to Kansas uh, to dump my, or not to dump uh, my vocabulary, man. <laughs> I'm going to transfer all of my stuff to uh, my hard goods to my sister. Um, and uh, she's super excited about it because a lot of that stuff until the day I delisted it, it was still selling. So she's super excited and I'm excited that I'm bringing her stuff that's still selling. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's where I am. Thank you, Linda. Um, so this is a good thought, Christine, because the thing that, matters the most in every category is your listing habit consistency and then once you get that solidified then what it, what happens is i want everyone in the group to experience this if you only care about your listing habit you naturally focus naturally because you're like oh you know what i can't list a hundred different things every day that's too hard you get too tired you're like you know what i'm just going to start listing the things that are easy to the point, and that's actually the point. You want this to be easy. I, I don't hear anybody on YouTube saying, hey, you know what? If you just keep doing what you're doing, every day it gets easier. They're always saying you have to do something different. You have to change or, or you don't have to. Everyone is doing a category that can be fine. So there is kind of one exception. Um, Tito in the chat is asking, has anyone bought overstock new with tags items and what was your experience? So new with tags items are... A, a, much more expensive. You're going to spend between, in my experience, between five and a hundred dollars per item because they're new or shelf pulls. So to me, it's, it doesn't translate the sales well when they're random. So for example, I got a new tags clothing lot, all of the MSRP it, um, are between a hundred and 500. But to me, they're not they're not in demand. Like that style that you buy from liquidation is not in demand. It's just like a thrifted item. It has a random, it's random. It's just quote unquote cheap, but quote unquote cheap. Like you're selling a, a, a certain item that was normally a hundred dollars at the store. You're trying to sell for 35, $40. That's not cheap. Cheap is like 15 to $20. That's cheap. So you still have to wait for someone to pay like 30 to 50% of MSRP, which is sometimes not easy when something is that expensive. I see tons of stores with liquidation that have a 2% sell through rate, 5% sell through rate a month, horrible sell through rates. Cause just overall their stuff is so expensive. It's cheap for that item, but expensive for eBay. I'd almost recommend try to sell it on Amazon where you can get closer to that retail price, but then you, you got to risk. Maybe it's not gift quality. Um, let's see, just in time is saying, make sure your shipping cost is competitive. Uh, I agree with that. So one thing that I'm doing that, um, is working for me, if you guys are listening on YouTube, please hit the like button. So, um, I have actually been increasing my prices slightly and increasing the promoted listings rate. So I used to just increase the promoted listings rate when things got older, but now I'm actually going higher. So um, I used to like discount things to around eight to ten dollars plus shipping to get rid of it. I'm trying something different. I literally raised the prices all to fourteen ninety nine. Now, normally you would think fourteen ninety nine is not a price that you want to get rid of it. Still okay, especially for a thrifted item. But I increased the promoted listings rate, 
and I'm getting sales on old items. So I think discounting it doesn't guarantee you more traffic, but promote listings does guarantee you more traffic, at least in the short term. So that's something to consider. Um, but yeah, back back to new tags. It's it's expensive. Just be careful when you um, are buying new tags lots. It's very capital intensive. And I would say, if you go to eBay Open and you meet a lot of the bigger sellers, a lot of them do that. They invest a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in a bank loan into liquidated brand new goods, and they just wait for them to sell. But to me, that model is very scary. It's the most expensive and the most risky. The, 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 least ex, the least risky is all used goods. The most risky is all random new goods. And then in the middle would be like all new goods in one category. That's not risky because you become really good at it. Christine, I think you'd have no problem now that, um, like you used to sell pots and pans. If you only sold brand new pots and pans, you would figure out the market. If you only sold brand new button down shirts, you'd figure out, which shirts sell well, you know, but if you bought a lot of random men's shirts, that would be risky in my opinion, if they're all new. Cause you'd have to buy, like, here's an example, English laundry. They look really nice, but they have horrible sell through rate. Just because the MSRP is $50. If you paid $13 for a new shirt, that's too much. Cause it might only sell for, $16 plus shipping brand new. So that makes it hard. Also styles come in and out of, out of popularity, which is, which is crazy. Um, Doomsday is saying everyone get ready for the $1,400 stimulus check. I agree with that. Every time they print money, everyone's sales goes up. Um, let's see. Hey, Melissa Chris says, is, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Did anybody else get invited to the February seller check-in? I think so. I just got it yesterday and I signed up for it. I didn't know if it was a random thing or I, I've never been invited to anything before. So uh, let me see. Here. It's Wednesday, February 24th. I th I actually block eBay emails. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I'll look and see if I have yeah. the. Um, it just came in yesterday. It's kind of like how to sell, what to sell, vice president of sales are going to have. About an hour of uh, Sweetman's going to be on there, GM. Yeah. Uh, Vice President of the Seller, Andrea, Stairs, yeah. Styes. You guys should tell me about it. I think it's a waste of time. Uh, it's, 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 it's an a, hour long. The, the reason why I don't like the eBay meetings is because they're not run by sellers. Yeah. I don't know, like, who, you know, who knows who every big seller is? eBay. They know who all the big sellers are. They should just pay somebody who's like somebody who has a store that does, uh, let's say $500,000 a year. Give that store owner a thousand dollars to speak for an hour. Everyone will learn more than, than, than eBay talking from a corporate level. It does not make, does not relate to anybody in this group. It's totally worthless. They said uh, they're doing an open form at the end of it. So maybe we'll that'll be useful, but I just feel like, you know, I went to, I've been to so many events. It's actually really cool to get free eBay gear. But as far as like learning stuff, I learn more from this call than I do from, from, from eBay seminars. They don't really, but yeah, it's not, um, I hate to break it to everyone. It's, you're not special if you've been invited to that gift. I don't know what, I, like, anyway, maybe you are special. You're special if you got invited to the eBay gift, the eBay, the eBay thing. But um, it's because they can't do a lot of live things. So I really did miss eBay open and the eBay meetups to go and meet re real sellers. That was always worth it to me. Um, so Melissa says that, do you think not only daily consistency is important, but the time of day? So that's a good question for Melissa. You get a 24 hour boost. When you post on eBay, you get a 24 hour best match boost. So it doesn't matter what time you post and Instead of timing when you post, just list an extra item. Don't like just list 12 items instead of 10, instead of thinking about when to post and your store will be way bigger than the day before. 
like I said, the, the consistency of your listing habit is the most important thing. If you average 10, $10 profit items a day, that's not, everyone can do that. That's 10 a day. Even if your sell through rate is one year, okay? After one year of doing that, you make $36,500 a year. That's only one year of doing that. You can do that even on your birthday and it won't mess up your birthday. 10 list, it might make your birthday awesome. If you wake up and list 10 items and then you go through your birthday, you do your, your birthday activities and knowing that you're gonna make $100, that, that might be a good jump start to your day. I mean, when I was starting, um, I drove Uber like five years ago and I tried to make $100 before I started my work day and it was awesome. Before I started working, I already had $100. It was a nice boost to the day. Um, you know, now DoorDash, DoorDash is better than Uber. You don't even need somebody in your car. If you want to just bust your butt in the morning and drive around. Um, there was a, um, a guy that had his kids kidnapped because he had both kids in the back seat and um, his car was stolen while he was doing a DoorDash. But they recovered the kids. But my point was, I was thinking to myself, what other job could you bring both kids with you? That's amazing. I mean, not, not that DoorDash is an amazing job, but the fact that you could actually do that. Um, I've only ordered DoorDash a couple of times um, since quarantine, but um, most of the time, the driver will not get out of their car because they're afraid of, I mean, maybe that's where I live, but you got to walk up to their car and get your food. So um, I love it. Also, for the record, I have to point out uh, from Kat, um, Kat in the group was saying that I'm too hard on California um, and crime rates are actually down. That might be true. I've just noticed um, that where I live, specifically in Oakland, it's a little scarier. So, but I think overall crime rates are down in California. Let's see. Um, Mark says that he has 1,300 listings and he has eight to 12 sales per day. Let's see, 12 times 30 is 300. I would say, Mark, you have an exceptional sell-through rate. If you have 1,000, if you, he has 1,300 listings and let's say 10 sales a day, that's 300 sales out of 1,300 items and he says that he's stuck. So the only, I, I guess if you had the same number of listings every month, you're not stuck. You're actually getting the exact result you're supposed to be getting. If you list 10 items and sell 10 items a day, you're not stuck. That's, that's a reality. If you want better results, you got to start listing 20 a day. Or you got to sell more in-demand items and spend more time looking for those items. But my experience has been easier growing your store than it is to... to um, spend all your time hunting. Somebody wrote me an email yesterday. Chris, you should spend your time selling items that are $200 instead of $20. I tried that and made way less money. How many $200 items can you find a day? Thousand? No way. I can find a thousand cheap items to sell every day without leaving my house. But doing $200 items, there's only like 500 categories that, that even have that kind of average sale price versus millions of categories that are, that are small, cheap stuff. Um, yeah, show me, show me a store that can list thousands of items that are over a hundred dollars a day. I haven't seen one, none, not one. Um, Travis, can you chat or are you actually driving? Um, let's see. You'll have to unmute. Yeah, I can chat. Sorry about that. What's going on? Where Where are you from? What do you do? I'm here in uh, Minnesota, freezing. It's awesome. uh, it's like below zero. So enjoy Dang. your California weather. Yeah. Uh, I'm at the bins. I'm about to go in and, and start sourcing. That's how I start my day every day. Is I come here every day. Uh, while I'm here, I list. And uh, you list at the stay. bins. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, Cause I, I look it. things. So what I've been doing lately is when I look things up, I find something I'm like, I look it up. I just mm -hmm. save it in my drafts. I go home, I upload the pictures and that's my listing. So I love it. I'm love listing, it. I'm, I'm listing between 15 and 20 things a day. I want to get to 30, uh, and, and try and be done by 
four or five o'clock every day. That's kind of where I'm at right now. But yeah. So I know a guy named Q in Houston. He has a 15 a day bin business. So it's, mm-hmm. it's pretty awesome. He brings an empty bin to the bins or a couple empty bins, lists everything on the floor at the bins oh, wow. all, all the way through. Wow. That's and then, crazy. And then puts it into the bin with that location. So let's like say bin number 67, put, puts it into the bin, mm-hmm. goes home, done. The only thing he does at home is um, shipping. Wow. No, I like to do, uh, I'm trying to get to like your to level of, what's that? I like the draft idea, but go ahead. Yeah, no, I, that's, that was something I figured out here too, but I want to get to, you know, I like the higher pictures. I feel like better quality pictures sell the item a little better. Um, so I want, you know, and lighting here isn't great. It's just not, you know, I'm doing clothing. So, you know, you, I just feel like it, it gets a better sell through rate with, with better pictures and, and better lighting. But yeah, the, when I'm looking things up, I'm, and I'm listing at the same time when I, in between stuff, because the way ours work with COVID rules, they bring out a bin, you get, you line up for that bin. If you're the first in line there, you get it first. And then, um, and then you pick through whatever and, and you wait about 45 minutes before they bring out new stuff. Mm. So you get 45 minutes of standing there. Most people just stand around and I'm like, no, nah, no, got to be doing something. So that, that is the reality of the bins. If you right. look for all 45 minutes, you'll be fine. Yeah, no, I, and I do sometimes, I just feel like I get enough stuff as it is. So, yeah. so I want to try and list as well. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I typically leave um, with enough stuff. So, I mean, it can always be better, but you know, reality of life, right? Definitely. I, I like I thought that. I was the only one in Go Minnesota. Ahead, Thought I was the only Minnesotan. Who's uh, you're the first Minnesotan besides me in this call? Oh, right on. So, nice Al- to meet you, Alex. What's yeah, going nice on? Yeah, nice to meet what's, you. What's working in your business, Alex? What's working is having other people do my listing for me. Um, it's probably the biggest part of my business that really helps me was getting virtual assistants and I got them from Upwork to start and then I took them off Upwork, pay them directly now. And uh, I tried out probably like eight different virtual assistants and I found one that worked really well and then she happened to have a sister who she could train. So they have two sisters in the Philippines that list all my items super fast for like 60 70 cents an item so it's really good it took a little while to get there and then secondly having other people do my photos and that is a process of just trying people paying them per item and then people who like it stay and people who don't leave and i i found them on making a post on facebook marketplace uh, advertising for a job basically and my posts get taken down often they get taken down usually in like a few days do you not pay I just for repost it? it no i don't but i've Why? considered starting to pay for it okay well i just didn't want to uh, pay money when i could get them for free but perhaps i'd find higher quality people that paid for it so. way higher quality people totally different you yeah. just make a Facebook ad. Then? Just pay, always pay for the most expensive ad to get the best quality people. Like people who are quality people don't look in the side gigs for extra hundred bucks. They look for like careers. So like, um, like when I spent like on online jobs.ph versus Upwork, totally different too for VAs. Like when I was on Upwork, it doesn't cost any money. And you pay more per, um, okay, this has been my experience so far with virtual assistants and regular people. The better, the more you spend, the higher quality person comes to you and you end up paying less. Like, right, because yeah. they do work twice as fast. Oh, no, they do work twice as fast and um, the hourly rate can be less when you go to a higher because people are looking for cons- people will take a job that's two or three dollars less an hour that's consistent 
they yeah. don't want they don't want to like, thank you for that website yeah you're welcome um is that uh do can anyone post on there and do they get charged by it's, the website so it's a it's a hundred dollars um a month to be on onlinejobs.ph but then you get it doesn't cost money to post anything and then you pay the virtual assistant direct so it's way cheaper for the virtual assistant that's why you get a better quality person when you do upwork they take a percentage of it until you go direct and that's okay but it's in my opinion upwork should be used more for tasks like if you have a repetitive task you want to do upwork is good because they um force them to compete for the lowest rate um but if you go on upward i mean uh um onlinejobs.ph you get a bigger pool of really really serious people so and, who has uh, to pay that subscription both parties or just, just you the, just me just the just the employer and then once you're done and you found people that you like and you stop with the subscription yeah okay or you can leave cool. it live and let the people keep rolling in because i have um one hack that I've been doing. So, okay, this is a good question. In the chat, someone says, how do you make listing systems? Very straightforward. You just write down how you list something. Then if you post an ad for it, this is a great example. Everyone in the chat, if I, and if I came to help you for 10 hours, what would I be doing? That's, that's how you start making a system. Assume that I'm really impatient and I don't want to waste time. If I come to your place for 10 hours, what am I doing? then if you don't have a instructions for me, I'm just going to be on my phone the whole time. And not, and just like every worker, every company that you walk to these days, you need to have instructions for people or they don't, they don't know what to do. Yeah. Photos of every photo that they need to take. I have like a list of required photos and then I have a, a list of, photos that are potential photos which is flaws or words i call them so anytime there's a word that take a picture of it anytime there's a flaw that take a picture of it i do also um darcy in the chat was saying that drafting at the bins is a good idea for me i think it's a bad idea but i can see that it works this is why um when you're at the bins your goal should be to get the most quality items that you can in the least amount of time, in my opinion, if you're waiting in line to pay, maybe draft, but like, I'm going to go to the bins after this call, I'm going to spend every single second getting as much stuff as I can. Then I'm going to list separately. When I go home, I'm going to list as many items as possible in one sitting instead of commingling. But if I did, if the bins, like I did everything by myself, I might go to, I might do what my friend Q does and list and do everything at the bins or do what Travis does and draft while I'm there. Um, but I just feel like that's mixing, mixing your, like, I wouldn't do any listing at my photo station. I would hey, just Chris. take photographs. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I just do it primarily when I'm looking up prices for something. Let's say I don't know what something is, but mm, I want to know. I got you. That's where I'm, that's where I'm doing my draft because that's smart. That, that's where it's like, why, why duplicate that work? Mm. When you went on, you found it, it, you're like, oh, I'm taking this. You spend a couple extra seconds and save it as a draft. And then you have it. That's, that's what I'm saying. I don't I always, that. I don't always do every single item that I get as a draft. That's, that's not good time management. I don't think, but you know, that's where I agree with you. But, but yeah, when you're looking stuff up, just save it as a draft. That's a good strategy for, yeah, in sourcing in general. If you have, if because that's true, I'm not looking up the cost. If I was looking up what it would sell for at the bins, I would definitely save that draft. That's a very good use of time. Can I ask a question? When you're looking it up, that's in a different uh, portion of the app than when you go to sell. Are you just saying you, you look it up and then you copy that title and then go to sell? Um, no, no, I, you can just back out. You can hit sell similar on your, if you're looking up comps, oh, I see. you go to, you go to the you hit sell similar and then you just back out. You don't post it. Got it. That's a great way to do it. I, I, I recommend that people, you, you sell similar Travis. Yeah. I just hit sell similar. Yeah. That's smart. Yep. Yep. 
So I do, uh, what I do is when I do my comps, you go to your filters. If people don't know, I, I'll, I, I'm sure most of you guys do, but go to your filters, look up comps and then, and then do yourself similar from there. Um, one more thing I want to mention about the, um, there's a feature called, uh, listings eligible, eligible to send offers. So you can send offers to people who watch your item or people who view your item on eBay. For me, when I increased my promoted listings rate, I actually decreased my offer and I haven't had any reduced sales. So it's kind of like, maybe that's what eBay, eBay wants is they want, they want to charge you for promoted listings and they want you to do offer to watch you to lower your price. What they want you to do is lower your price and pay them more percentage of a fee because they make more. So in that case, I think that maybe you don't have to be as aggressive on your offer to watcher if you have a more aggressive promoted listings rate. So just something for you guys to test. Um, let's see. Also, I, okay, let me back up for a second. I don't want people to not go to the eBay meeting because I said it was a waste of time. It's, it's not a waste of time. You will learn something. It's just, it's probably better to hang out with other sellers who do the same thing as you. Some or eyeball industries is asking if I use HTML formatting or just my eBay list or just text only. I only do text only because I feel like um, eBay is designed for mobile. So as an example, I put the measurements in the condition description so people can see it when they're scrolling on mobile. To get to the item description on eBay mobile, you have to actually click on the description. So come on, guys, people don't click anymore. TikTok, you don't even have to click before it plays the next video. People don't click. Like they may not even scroll through all your photos. That's why somebody said they moved the, the measurement photo to the second photo to get people to actually see it because they're only looking at one or two photos before they decide if they want to buy something. Um, Mimi, if you're not getting sales from offer to likers, I might depend on, um, I mean, I might try either different offers or um, I would say I only convert maybe four or 5% of those people to sales. Alex, you have a thought? I have a question. Yeah. Um, first, I like that what you said about um, the offers. I think I do offers every night and it definitely increased my sales by like two or three sales. So I get like 200 watched items per day. And then I probably get like two or three sales. I only do 5% though. So that is less than you, it seems like. Um, and then I was wondering what that material is that you have clothing cling to it when you take photos. It's called utility fabric. Um, if you send me, a, um, an email later, I'll reply with the number at Joanne's to order it. Um, yeah, it's the inside of, um, it's, uh, the inside of the oven material. And, uh, can it uh, hold like every single type of material or definitely not? Yeah. Gravity. Um, I have a like super secret down. tip that I, I don't share on how I get it to stick okay. to every material. <laughs> um, actually, it's not a super secret, secret tip. I will reveal it if everyone in the video hits the like button. I just use pins to hold it up. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's genius. It's genius. I can't believe that my, uh, my photographer was like, we don't need to use a hanger. We can just use pins. Um, there, there are these tiny pins that she pushes through the seam of the clothing so it doesn't damage it and holds it up so I don't have to use hangers anymore. It's insane. I feel like that's kind of a, a lot of time. For it's us. not. Have you ever tried putting something on a hanger? That takes a long time. Way slower. Way, it's not even comparable. I keep my pins on my board yep. right where the neckline is and exactly. right the shoulders are. So whenever I yep. take something off, I just go tick, 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 and flip it and tick, 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 and I'm done. 
So it doesn't, you know, when I'm, the noise is just restick the pen, <laughs> you know? So it makes, I mean, your, your person is genius. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's so amazing. No more hangers. So yeah, it's huge. It's a huge hack for those that are still listening on the call on YouTube land. You just gotta, if you're so clothing, it's massive. It's essentially, it does the same thing as a flat lay, but vertical, you know? But flat, flat lay, I don't know. It's really good. I, I think people who do flat lay at scale do really well. That's a good way to do it. Um, let's go with Don. Don, what's working well in your business? Uh, good morning. Yeah, what's, what's working well? It seems like I'm spending less time on on, you know, having the same amount of sales, you know, I don't, I don't know what exactly what's going on. Um, one thing is, you know, my niece is gone and, and just uh, not having to deal with somebody at the moment, um, you know, and it also kind of goes aligns with you guys trying to focus, you know, I've just been really sticking with my, my vintage electronics and not buying, you know, boxes of crap for her to list just because she's here, you know, small items that I don't like to sell. And, you know, I've just been, you know, just able to, to, uh, to, to just knock them out, you know, just, you know, I have my, my testing station and, you know, I'm, I'm doing several a day just, and it's, and it seems like I'm not, not stressing at night. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, I don't have the, the high volume of sales like you guys have with the clothing, but, but I don't want that, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to sell sell three or four $200 items a day and it's, and it works, you know? So I, and then also I my exercise, I got this Apple watch for Christmas and, it, and you have to complete these rings mm. every day. And so every day, you know, it's, I can see that, you know, I used to get, I had a Fitbit, which counts your steps mm -hmm. before, which is kind of misleading because this, this counts your steps, but if your heart rate doesn't go up, that doesn't count as exercise. You, you, you have to actually dedicate some time to, you know, to, 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 to exercise. So I used to I have it. my fit. Oh, I got 12,000 steps. I'm kicking ass. But, but this, the Apple watch knows it's like, that doesn't count if you're just, you know, walking little baby steps that you have to actually. So yeah, just, you know, just those things, you know, so I'm, I'm just spending less time on the business. Um, another thing is, you know, I've been focusing on devoting a portion of my profits investing in the market in crypto and you know i mean this is this is like this is amazing you know the, the growth that i'm seeing from from this you know just not directly investing back into the business but it, but putting it into into the market and and this crypto is is a uh, the new world here with with how how much the money's increasing it doesn't even it doesn't make sense yeah but i do know <laughs> it, yeah, it's awesome ahead. It is no, it's, awesome. I mean, it, it's, it is kind of like, I'm not putting everything in because, you know, I, I won't be surprised if one day it's like, it, it's like, there it was like the dot com thing. Like, aha, those, those idiots, they fell for Bitcoin. It, it was, it was just a joke. You know, it was nothing, you know, and it just all evaporates, you know. Yeah. It's important to have enough money or like if you, it's so weird. If you want extra money to invest, you need to narrow down your focus. But I like that you, are focused then you actually have more time like it takes less time i, I find i've have found the same thing yeah just you know just listening to you guys that's that's kind of your new theme i think you know you, you adopted that since your relationship with mm -hmm. tech has been rekindled mm -hmm. and then and then and you've been you know preaching that and then everyone else here in the group has kind of started to to realize it and so you know naturally if, if it's working for you guys i'm, I'm going to try it myself and uh and so it's, you know, it's, it's still, you know, I, I, it's like a, it's like an addiction though. If I see a high profit item, you know, I, I'm, I have to, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, I'm totally off the juice. You know, if I see something good, I, I don't know if I'm going to pass it up at it, but it's a mindset at this point, you know, of the, of the benefits of, of narrowing down your categories, you know, so that's, you know, I still have a ton of, of inventories in my store that, that's, you know, that's, that's of multiple categories, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm jumping on the bandwagon too, to the best of my ability. Yeah. I love it. Let's go with Nick. Nick, what's working for you? 
Uh, <laughs> it's so tough because I'm such a pessimist. So a lot of my mind, it just kind of goes to the negative. Um, so that's hard. You know, I haven't been, so, I mean, my store, I'm trying to do like maybe less volume, but kind of like the higher profit items. So kind of treasure hunting. Um, so, you know, I found some quality items, but you know, really I just, I gotta be getting out there more often. I got a lot of stocked up inventory and I'm trying to go through what to focus on and whatnot. Um, so, I mean, it's working. I have sales, but they're not quite as consistent. So, you know, it's hard, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm quite there yet. Why do you feel like your sales aren't consistent yet? Or do you not know? Uh, I mean, I, I have like maybe 420 some odd listings. Some are like on the lower end um, and some of them are seasonal, but I still kind of left them up because the listing and unlisting and relisting process was kind of a little bit crazy, like Halloween costumes and that sort of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like I'm at a point where I mean, it's working. I have sales coming in, but it's not really at the level I, I want it or need it. Um, Alex in the chat is saying that um, the his sales weren't consistent until he had 2,000 items. Yeah. And someone in the chat was saying they had consistently have 10 listings at um, or 10 sales a day at 1,300. And so let me think here. I might, that might actually hold true for me. I think it, no, actually, never mind. It won't. Um, but I think it, the size of your store really does matter if you're selling random items. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So. One, one more thought on the, the higher end items. Every time I sell an item over a hundred dollars, it usually sells within one or two months. They sell faster than cheap items. Just because they're they're more in demand, you could like a twenty percent discount on a two hundred dollar item is huge. If somebody's interested at two hundred dollars, they might pull the trigger at one sixty. So, but like a twenty dollar item, they may not pull the trigger at ten. They don't really want it that much. So, like a uh, the higher end stuff, if you're going to play that game of Chris, why don't you go look for two hundred dollar items? I, if I was just by myself, I would I might do that, but it, I just that doesn't add up. I want to, I want $4,000 a day in sales. I can't find $4,000 worth of $200 items a day. My eyes would bleed. If I had to look for $2,200 items a day, I would hate myself. That's really hard. Two or three, five. Okay. But like trying to, and then plus I don't want to do it myself and I want my shipping to be under an hour. I can't, sh every time I ship something expensive, it takes a long time. There's not like a, when I ship a twenty dollar item, it takes ten seconds. So it's the, you know, there's so there's so much to this business, guys. Everyone is doing something different, but I'd definitely stay the course, Nick. Yeah, I'm lucky. Like if I go and I find two or three two hundred dollar items and I get them for fifteen, I'm like super ecstatic. Um, but I need to be sourcing more consistently and be more picky. You know, again, I have some dead stock that's not lit. You know, death pile, I guess you call it. Uh, not listed right now, but then I'm trying to prioritize through that to see which ones, you know, should take priority on listing. So. so Martha has a really good question in the chat. And I want to highlight it. She said, um, how do you research better keywords? This is fantastic. Matt brought this up yesterday or the day before. Whatever it is you're selling, try to find it on eBay. If you're sell this person is selling an exogen bone healing system. If you type into eBay, exogen bone healing system, there will be auto-populated drop-downs with keywords. You want to use all those keywords because that's how people actually search for it. And um, that person also asked if it gets removed. I mean, it, it, got, it got removed from the manufacturer. Or there's a varil on it. The only way that you would know that is if you, you're in your specific niche and, and you're selling that. If you're selling completely random items every single day, you wouldn't know if you could remove, if you could sell that item or not. Like the only, I guess, exception would be like Velcro. No one can use the word Velcro because they own that word. But other than that, you don't know. I don't know if you can sell tractor equipment on eBay, which 
tractor equipment you can sell, which brands are really like, does John Deere come after you really hard? I have no idea. I'd have to be in that niche to know. Um, um, oh, that's another good tip from Eyeball Industries. Eyeball Industries is talking about what it was like before eBay as well, but you can type the same thing into Google. And since eBay at the end of every night sends all their listings to Google for Google AdSense or Google AdWords, see what Google likes, use those words too. So use what Google wants and what eBay wants to determine it. Let's go Linda. Linda, good morning. What's working well for you? Just consistency, of course, listing every day. <laughs> Um, I'm starting to see a lot of uh, multiple orders and sales, which is really cool. So it really saves me on shipping. Because for me to ship four pairs of earrings costs the same as one pair. So I make a lot more money that way. Somebody had asked about volume shipping in the chat. I, I have a, um, a few replenishables. So people buy more than one with the volume pricing. And also, um, if you, everyone should set up the combined shipping discount right now because it does make a huge difference. Um, I'll show you guys. Let's see. eBay just offered me, a, since all my items are like items, I can do the volume shipping on separate items, which is really cool. But I can only do 500 at a time, which is a little bit of a bummer. But. Chris, is it, I just changed that. Isn't the minimum combined shipping uh, time, it gives them three days, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, like I just put that on because somebody wanted to buy two of the same item and it says that it allows them three days to do that. I mean, they're probably gonna buy them. I mean, maybe not in your store because you have so many different things, but um, it, that was the minimum thing. I couldn't choose like one day. Let's see. I had a, let me look at it. Let's look at the promotions. So also I have had a 7% increase in sales overall from just this one promotion. So, which is 999 flat shipping for two or more items. So it looks like, um, I don't know where, where does it say I how was, many days? I was in something different. This is like okay. a promotion. Um, yeah. Let me find where I was at. Okay. It was in metal shipping settings. Oh, the settings. Okay. Okay. I wonder how much money you save on returns as well, because you don't have to refund shipping. A, a ton. Thousands yeah. of dollars. I mean, big. Also, I just got that report from eBay saying how much being a top rated seller saved me over the last year in that little, it was like $10,000 in the additional final value fee savings, the protection against negative feedback, all of that stuff for offering free returns. And I, again, I don't know if this is true, but um, somebody eBay told me only 4% of people offer free returns. Like, um, it's really, really, really low. People don't offer free returns. But it, to me, I think it's because they don't understand free returns. It seems like free returns is cheaper. I could be wrong. From my experience, offering free returns is cheaper than paying for returns. Because you don't have the penalty. It's really unlikely that you'll get the 5% penalty. And also, no negative feedback. You can charge a little bit more when you have free returns. You get a little bit of a discount on the final value fees. So I don't know why only 4% of people offer free returns when it's actually cheaper. Um, Shaney, the combined shipping is on more than one item, like a, two different items and also volume pricing on, on a singular item. You can check that at the end of the listing, yes. Is there, is there, the way you were talking about it is like there was something else as far as combined. Cause I do that on all my listings. Like the, there's the little check boxes at the bottom. Mm -hmm. If you buy one, it's this, two, it's this. Is yeah. there another trick? No. Uh, oh yeah, there, there is. So I use both. 
I have at the bottom, the volume pricing is like buy two, buy three, buy four, get an additional discount. I also have a combined shipping promotion in the promotions tab where, so let me give you an example of yesterday when someone did both. You guys remember those Ben's shorts that I bought? So somebody added two gray shorts. So I charged $6.99 for shipping. They added two gray shorts to the cart. So um, to get the, the discount, so it's 10% off of two or more. So they got two pairs of shorts for 10% off each in their cart. Then they added another pair of shorts to the cart. And so the whole order, they only paid $9.99 for three pairs of shorts. So they used both promotions in the same. same so thing. someone can buy like three or four items and still only pay $9.99 with yeah. your discount? Yeah. Exactly. Someone bought seven yesterday, which is, that, that's really Whoa. rare for me. I never buy that. I never um, get that many in one order. All seven, all Dockers, seven pairs of Dockers for $69 plus shipping. And I was like, dang, that's awesome. Because that's I paid- the most money ever, anyone's ever made on Dockers. Right. Um, I paid, <laughs> seven, paid seven, sold for 70. And that's like the- um, and, I, and he paid $9.99 for shipping. And um, lots of times I got lucky because it was like less than $9.99 for shipping because it stayed in California. Got really lucky on that one. What did you ship it in? A box. Small box. Um, and then it didn't quite, I think it was 12 by 6 by 6. Um, let me see. 12 by six by six, maybe not. Maybe it was, um, I don't know. It was flat. It, it just went to LA. I think it was like uh, nine, nine or $10 for shipping. Okay. I, so real quick, there's a yeah. promoted listing combined shipping. That I, That's new to me. What is this? Okay. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see the screen. I'll share. In the um, promotions tab and marketing right here, promotions. It'll pull up different ways that you can offer promotions. There's four promotions or five promotions. Order discount, shipping discount, volume pricing, code list coupon, and sales event plus markdown. So volume pricing is what we were talking about earlier where they get a discount on two or more items. Um, like here's an example. This one is um, like I did this Trader Joe's one as an example for people. Um, like this wafer cookie that they have there that I like to eat. I was experimenting with the um, mul multiple item in the same item promotion, but the free shipping. So I have this set up $9.99 when you buy two. So people can go into my store and look at this, at what items qualify. And so usually what people will do is they'll click on this. They'll narrow down to whatever they're looking for. Uh, let's see. Let's go to size 34. So now someone can go through all 405 items in my store that I have in size 34 and pick, pick more items and pay one shipping cost. I didn't realize I have that many in size 34. I was as big as some people's stores. Nick, you have 400 items. I have 400 just size 34 pants. So it should be easier for someone to find something. And so that promoted listing little trick probably boosts the SEO on your items too, right? Yeah, I think so. So I'm a big go ahead. I'm a big fan of upselling people. So we've talked about this before where somebody buys something from you while they're there, why wouldn't you you know try to get them to buy as many items as possible? This is a great trick. I've got to add this. Yeah, this is the um do you want fries with that? Yes. What would you uh, recommend for people that have sell like a lot of different types of items because you only sell clothes? So what type of shipping discount? I would do an order discount. I think I would say like $200 or more, or $300 or more, you get an extra 5% uh, or 10% to okay. encourage people to look at your other random items because it does work. I mean, okay, let me back up. eBay calls us the, tri the trifecta. Okay. You guys ready? Everyone like the video and then write these down. The trifecta from eBay recommended for the best sales. Promoted listings. Okay, they recommend you do promoted listings. Okay, all of these things cost you money too. So notice how they recommend things that make them more money and cost you money. But anyway, number one, promoted listings. Number two, 
sales, sale is event plus markdown. They recommend running a sale, but they don't recommend a fake sale. They recommend an actual sale. You want a hundred dollars for it too bad. Sell for 20, for, for 80 bucks. <clears throat> so promote listings plus sales event plus markdown plus one of the other ones like promoted uh, um, order discount or shipping discount. So they want you to combine three different sales in the same sale. They'll give you the best ranking supposedly for that. But, but you could be like Matt and not do any of those three and save the most money and don't worry about what eBay wants and just sell good items. But if Matt were to decide to do that, if Matt decided, you know what, I'm going to sell good items and do eBay's triple threat, his sales would go up. It would cost him more money, but if you only cared about revenue, they would go up. It'd be impossible for it not to go up. Go ahead, Matt. What a, what a great, what a great experiment, Matt. You know the Try way I think. Get it, get it on for a week. The way I think about it, it's all about sell through rate. All that stuff does is improve your sell through rate. Stuff's gonna sell anyway. It's just gonna take longer. Could take two years, three years. You might have a sell through rate of seven percent. But if you got space, you don't care about sell through rate. And then at the very end, when you're ready to get out of eBay, that's when you have your big sales and everything. Sell through rate goes up to fifty percent. You sell half your shit in a month. Boom, you're done. Right. That's the way I think about it. All it does is help sell through rate. That's it. And it costs you money because your Man, items aren't selling for exactly disagree. what you want them to sell for. Go ahead, Matt. Or, I mean, go ahead, Alex. I have to disagree. I, I kind of used to think that way, but if I sell more stuff, then I can buy more stuff to sell again because um, money is the most important thing. And <clears throat> basically, I'm always out of money because I'm just reinvesting. So if I make more sales every day, then I have more money to grow faster. I, I get you right there. I don't really have a problem with the money, though. I, I already spend a lot of money every week on inventory, employees, etc. But I have, I have a lot of money coming in, so I don't need any more money right now. I'm really just looking to stack, you know. Cool. Hey, Chris, I got a question. Yep. Um, on the free returns, yep. does it, um, do they only give you the, um, what did you say? It was like bestseller rating if it's free returns on everything? Or is it, because the majority of my stuff, I have free returns, but things like um, household cleaners or vintage items, I don't have returns on. I have like a no return policy on that stuff or in, in like um, personal hygiene stuff. So you, you just get the discount on that specific item or don't like, um, I have four items that are, um, that I would consider not having returns on, but I just have it anyway. So the triple threat okay. makes eBay the most money costs you the most money, but in theory gives you the fastest sell through rate, which is, um, I should probably make a video on that. It's uh, promoted listings promoted listings it is a sales markdown event and then uh come it's a, a, another promotion so like um, chris i'm sure you your pricing recently has been more aggressive mm -hmm. it, it has the numbers changed that much when it was jacked up and you did the triple um definitely each time i i do like a um, every time I change the parameters, the sales go up a lot. So whether I discount it or I increase promoted listing, because, okay, this is what happens. Each time I do that, the traffic increases. So do I net more money? I guess it depends on like, I'm already at the point now where the money is more than I can even reinvest. So that's where Matt, Matt was talking about. If you're not worried, like I can't reinvest all of it into the store unless I start doing like, it would be hard to do that. You can't, like um, you can't spend, it's, overspend. Go ahead. No, that's fair enough. I, no, I, I understand. I mean, you're. Oh, you're saying, you're is it worth it? The, is it worth it? The, okay. Yes. 
it is a good question and I'll answer it. And then this will be the last question. The, um, okay. I learned this from a guy that used to run a shop in the UK. He told me when there's an opportunity to buy inventory, sometimes you run a temporary sale. So uh, that, that happened to me because right now I'm trying to build up a queue of inventory. I would like 2000 items that are unlisted always so that I can have two weeks of backlog in case, um, I can't find stuff. Right. So, I ran a, a temporary sale to pay for that inventory influx. So if Matt wanted to buy 50,000 pairs of jeans and needed $50,000, maybe he'd run a temporary sale, sell 80% of his store, get that money, reinvest it. Instead of coming out of your own pocket, you can just sort of use your, your um, like, okay, use it as a savings account. But that's kind of dumb because you're, you're kind of taking future, pro you're using future profits to pay for something. Actually, that, this is a really good um, analogy. When you do the triple threat, you're borrowing from the future. You don't have to do it. You do not have to. You can just wait for it to sell naturally. You know, it would only make sense financially if you could turn your money over quicker. Like, the, it doesn't make sense, though, if you have a limited number of listings that you can do. If you can do 100 listings every week, you want to maximize the money you make on 100 listings. Now, if you could sell through faster. Now you can do 200 listings. Okay. Now it makes sense to get your money back faster. But if you're not doing more volume, then that's what, that's why Walmart, everyone should read made in America by Sam Walton. He talks about this. Like the only reason Walmart can offer low prices is because they sell a crap load of things. You can't, you can't do that. If you're a mom and pop shop at home, no, no mom and pop shop is selling blowout prices every day. There's no like, you, you can't do that when you're small. It doesn't make sense. Don't blow out your items when you're a one person operation. That doesn't make any sense. If you know, it, oh, like if you only have an hour to list 10 items, then you need to make as much money as you can on those 10 items. Don't run any promotions. Don't do anything. That was something that I just thought of while you were talking right there. Uh, imagine how, your, your attention is being split so much. You're worrying about the triple threat. You're worrying about promoted listings, what time of day to list stuff. Blah. You're worrying about all this stuff. Look at Tekken Sports. He worries about one thing, listings. You know what I'm saying? He's the most successful at it, right? Yeah. Isn't he like the gold standard? He's all he the worries gold about standard. is one thing, listing. That's it. One platform. They worried about the triple threat. None of this new uh, no, nope. he's, he's old school. You know, he does the He does it the same way he did it eight years ago or whatever. Yeah. Right. Just it's, it's, uh, it's wasting your brain power, you know, worrying about all this different stuff. Right. Yeah. That like, um, yesterday in the call, he said that he's not trying to be a scientist like me, which is good. You don't need to be a scientist. There's no, what is the point of being a scientist when there's a guaranteed the way, way to make more money, which is have more listings. Tech does probably okay. He does do all the science. It's just not his focus. He does it. He does promote listings. He does a markdown. He does all of the things. But the thing is, there's no way you could list 250 items a day and not make millions of dollars. It's impossible. Try listing 250 items a day and not making millions of dollars. It's impossible. Yeah, but just think about it, Chris. If if, if you and he hooked up on the same plane, you'd be the mad scientist of the, of the flipping He doesn't world. need me. He doesn't need me. He doesn't I know. need me. I know. Chris. That's it's, the, it's, I know <laughs> this is, that, that is such a great point. I actually, I need him. He does not need me because you can list 250 items, essentially bare minimum what he's doing, like no lighting kit, nothing. He could just turn up all the promoted listings, turn up everything he would still sell hundreds of items a day and you don't need to be a scientist. It's not necessary. He just does it. Honestly, I think he just does it for fun. He doesn't need to. He lists more items in a day than most people do per month. So he has 30 times the income of a normal person. So at that point you can do whatever you want. Like, but I got to 